So first of all, I'd like to thank um, Ray uh, Kawashima and uh, George Mina for inviting me here today. Um, I know UNICEF for a while and I know that you guys are doing really great stuff. So thanks for having me in today. Um, next slide. So, you know, um, first of all, the DART mission is um, a part of NASA's overall program. Just want to talk a little bit about NASA so you know kind of where, um, just kind of have some basic information about NASA. Um, you know, up in the left-hand corner is the NASA administrator, uh, Senator Bill Nelson. He's been the NASA administrator for going on a couple of years now. Um, he actually flew to space as a member of Congress in 1986. So he's an astronaut as well. Um, and he was recently in Japan, so I had a chance to host him in Japan um, in early February, so last month. Um, and so uh, just want to kind of give you a kind of, a under, kind of an overview of kind of how NASA is organized. Uh, we have four main missions at, at NASA. We do aviation or aeronautics research, um, not like the Federal Aviation Administration for the United States in terms of making policies and, and, and guidance, but we're looking at uh, research, looking at how the United States can be can remain competitive in the field of aviation research in the future. And if you look at that kind of model airplane on the left-hand side on our aeronautics research, as you can see, the engines are at the top. So that's not the way planes are actually flown today, but they could be in the future. So we're looking at all kinds of ways to make sure that um, we make the best use of you know, our, our aviation uh, technology. And so we try different little things and do a lot of research. Um, and so um, maybe in the future aircraft would be like that where it could have less drag or something like that. So we're looking at aviation and aeronautics research from a research um, standpoint uh, for the future, maybe 20, 30 years down the future. Well, the next uh, mission director is the human exploration op mission, operations mission director. This is maybe the most um, well-known mission director at NASA. That's all the stuff we do um, to make sure that humans um, um, stay safe and are able to expand and, and extend human presence in the solar system. So anything you might see in terms of human, putting humans um, in space, such as um, the International Space Station, uh, the former um, space shuttle, um, the new rocket, the space launch system that is part of the Artemis program, um, and all of this commercial crew, such as SpaceX and soon Boeing, and all the um, um, cargo missions, such as Japan's HTV and Europe's um, 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 ATV and, um, and, and all the commercial companies that are going to the International Space Station for cargo. That's all under the Human Exploration Operations Mission Director. So that's obviously the largest mission director at NASA. Uh, NASA's budget is about uh, 21 billion and about half of that goes to Human Exploration Operations Mission Director. Uh, the, the second largest is Science Mission Director. Uh, that's looking at, we have four main areas of science research. Earth observation or Earth science, that's making sure that we have a lot of information about our own planet so we can have informed and make informed decisions about how we protect our planet. That's heliophysics, that's looking at the sun. That's planetary science, that's looking at any kind of um, anything in our own planetary solar system. And then astrophysics, everything that's beyond our solar system, so it's exoplanets or the recent James Webb Space Telescope or the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, this looking at maybe um, exoplanets and things outside our solar system. And so the thing I'll be talking about today, um, the DART mission is funded under the planetary um, mission, planetary science mission director, because um, the asteroids that we are observing are in our own kind of solar system. Um, and so that's funded, that's out of that mission director. And obviously space technology is our most recent, and that's looking at all the technologies NASA will need to make sure that we can do the aeronautics, human exploration, science mission directors of the future. And that's the most recent. NASA had become a little bit of a kind of a, um, just kind of doing implementation like the International Space Station. A lot of, uh, there was a lot of uh, thought within NASA that we didn't have the new, the new technologies that we need for the future. And so Congress directed NASA to, to develop the space technology mission director a few years ago to make sure we had those cutting edge technologies that we'll need to do the, um, um, very challenging mission that we have for ourselves for the future. Next slide. And the next slide. Um, sorry if it's stuck or something like that. So the next one was um, the um, the was um, the uh, all of the research centers. As I mentioned in the previous slide, we have 
10 research centers at NASA. And so the next slide is showing all of the, uh, the research centers we have across the United States. Um, but the main one being for um, the DART mission was a Jet Propulsion Laboratory located um, in Palisade, Pasadena, California. Um, like I said, I've been at NASA for 20 years. And because I work primarily policy, um, I was at NASA headquarters for 15 years um, in Washington, DC, um, prior coming to Japan. The, the, the interesting thing about this is you can see we're spread all across the United States. And so um, when we're trying, trying to get funding, uh, we're not red states or blue states, if you're familiar with US politics. Uh, we're kind of um, um, in all of different areas. <laughs> we're in the South, we're in the North. We're in the Western part of the United States and we have a very strong presence in the East as well. So we're spread out across the United States. Next slide. And today I'll talk about the DART mission. Uh, you may have, you know, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. The DART mission was NASA's demonstration of kinetic impact of technology. Um, the spacecraft launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 um, from Vandenberg, California in about November of 2021. And then about 10 months later, um, it, we intentionally crashed the spacecraft into an asteroid um, on September 26, uh, 2002, last year. As images and live stream from the spacecraft show, it successfully impacted the asteroid we call a Dimorphos, uh, completing the world's first uh, planetary defense um, test mission um, in history. And so um, it was very exciting. Um, um, I don't know if you were watching, but I was watching from here in Japan. Um, and so uh, the whole world watches that we slam and crash the spacecraft intentionally into an asteroid. The mission, in my, in my opinion, was kind of low cost. Um, in my opinion, um, it, it, it was cost uh, roughly about $325 million. And for the excellent science that we were able to, to obtain uh, from the dark spacecraft, in my estimation, um, that was good. Uh, bang for your buck, as we call it in the United States. Uh, the, the term kinetic uh, impact technology um, involves sending a large spacecraft into the path of an asteroid of approaching near Earth, uh, approaching near Earth uh, object that deflect, deflect the, the asteroid into a different trajectory, um, steering it away from the Earth's orbital path. Um, next slide. When well, we go back to the previous slides, right? So uh, DART's target is the binary asteroid system uh, Didymos, uh, which means twin in Greek. And Didymos was the ideal candidate for um, the first um, planetary defense experiment. Although it's not a, this asteroid is not actually on a path to collide with Earth and therefore poses no actual threat to, to our planet, uh, the, um, the system is composed of two asteroids. The first, the larger asteroid, uh, Didymos, and the smaller um, asteroid, a uh, moonlit asteroid, uh, Dimorphos, which orbits the, the, the larger asteroid. Uh, prior to uh, DART's kinetic impact, the orbital period of Dimorphos and Didymos was about, uh, about 11 hours and 55 minutes. And then the DART spacecraft impacted Dimorphos nearly head on shortening the time it takes a small asteroid moon to orbit Didymos, uh, which I'll talk about later in terms of the time. Uh, this slide that you're, you're looking at right now shows the member of the DART team celebrating on September 26, 2002, as images streamlined from the spacecraft, showing how it successfully impacted the or asteroid Did uh, Dimorphos. I completed the world's first uh, planet, um, first planetary defense test mission. And you may ask, uh, why, why, why do we, or why did NASA crash a, a, a large multi-million dollar spacecraft into an asteroid? And more, more importantly, uh, what science are we getting from it? Next slide. So there are currently, and, and I'm sure Ozaki-san and, and Yoshikawa-san um, we'll talk about this more in depth, but um, from my understanding, there are currently a more than a 1 million known asteroids out there, and they vary from size, shape, and composition, and they move in different orbits around the sun. Some even cross um, paths with the Earth's orbit, and they typically don't pose a threat to, to our precious Earth. But as you know, um, asteroid impacts have occurred uh, throughout 
or Earth's history. Um, scientists believe um, that an asteroid impact led to the extinction of dinosaurs uh, a long time ago. And unfortunately, um, dinosaurs didn't have a space agency. <laughs> but we do have space agencies now. So NASA, along with some of our international partners, uh, really feel that you know, it's an obligation uh, to try to protect our, our planet. Um, the main purpose was, was to figure out if there's anything we need to worry about out there and, and when we need to worry about it. And the DART mission uh, was preparing us uh, to have future defense uh, methods for hazardous asteroids. And, and more importantly, uh, through the DART mission, we were able to rearrange uh, one celestial body, um, the dimorphous um, asteroids orbit. Um, go, can you go back to the, the previous slide? Um, Yeah, so the image that you see on your left hand was taken by ATLAS, which is an asteroid impact early warning system that was developed by the University of Hawaii uh, through, through NASA uh, cooperation or NASA funding. Um, this, uh, the ATLAS viewed the, the collision between DART and Dimorphos. And in this, video, in this video clip, the plume of the debris envelopes Dimorphos after the impact which occurred about 11 million kilometers from Earth. A dart collided with the asteroid at roughly 14,000 miles per hour. Um, and, and as you might imagine, navigating a small spacecraft that far away from Earth uh, leaves little room for error, error. So we were all very nervous at the time um, and we were really excited to see uh, the success of the dart mission. Next slide. Um, so we really used some really innovative and really cool technologies for the mission. Uh, for the example, NASA created a, a, a system called SmartNav, which is a new technology system that allows a spacecraft to direct itself entirely on its own without human uh, intervention or human telling it what to do. Uh, DART conducted the last four hours of the mission using this new SmartNav system. Um, the smart NAS system located the object, which is Dimorphos, uh, made sure to select the correct asteroid, which it did, and estimated trajectory corrections and commanded maneuvers on the fly. But when, I, when I say on the fly, I mean, you know, at that time um, by itself uh, to achieve the higher level directions and of its hit to Dimorphos. So it was a very cutting edge technology and it was really, really, um, um, really, really successful. Smart nav system. Um, little was known about the competition of Dimorphos before the actual collision. Uh, we only had pixelated and radar images giving us a small clues about the surface. Um, but now um, um, scientists continue to get data about the crash um, from a small CubeSat built by the Italian space station called uh, Licia Cube. Uh, Licia Cube is a six unit CubeSat which communicates directly with Earth sending back images of the ejecta and the plume of the DART's impact, as well as have um, done asteroidal um, um, studies uh, during its flyby um, of the uh, Didymo system. Uh, Alicia Q was the first um, purely built um, uh, autonomous spacecraft in deep space. And as I mentioned before, it was built by the U U um, Italian space agents. And then in the spacecraft on your right, um, in 2024, the European Space Agency, we call them ESA, will build us um, and will launch a spacecraft called HERA. And when HERA will reach uh, Dimorphos, um, the same spacecraft, the same uh, asteroid that we um, collided into in about the 2026 timeframe to conduct uh, deep post -im impact surveys on Dimorphos. Uh, how I will uh, advance um, scientific understanding of Dimorphos and internal properties and the outcome of the dark test. Um, so we'll have a lot more fit, um, information about uh, our, our dark our dark mission once this once the European spacecraft gets there. Uh, through dark is only a test, and, and Dimorphos isn't a threat to planet Earth. Uh, carrying out real tour tests with using. Um, European follow-up mission is gonna be really, really important. And I think it's really, really um, gonna be really exciting for scientists to get future information in the 2026 timeframe. So I'm very looking forward to hearing 
um, you know, anything that Ozaki-san and Yoshikawa-san will talk about that. Next slide. And so DART's impact um, reduced the time it takes to Morpheus to orbit a larger asteroid companion, Adenimos, by 33 minutes. Um, from, from what I hear, from my understanding from scientists, by 33 minutes um, uh, to about 11 hours and 23 minutes from what I said earlier. Um, to arrive at that number, um, the, the, the scientists studied the binary Adenimos system using telescopes located in about seven continents. Um, about uh, over about almost 250,000 images were taken by this uh, by camera, Draco camera, which is now available online on NASA's planetary uh, website, system, um, planetary data systems website, which I can give you early, early later. And these images show um, that everything worked pretty well, and it has really, really good um, images of the of the of the of the images of Adidas. Um, helping um, scientists confirm that the asteroid is kind of a rubble pile, which you see on your right hand side. Um, next slide. So, um, just to kind of sum it up, and um, we're still finding out uh, much information about the mission, and we'll find out more when the European Space Station sends its spacecrafts up there in the 2026 timeframe. But for now, uh, we know that its main objective, which was successfully impact um, Dimorphos, was, was successful and changed its trajectory. So we know it did that. And so um, we're really, really excited about that. I'm really excited about the future information that we'll get um, as, as scientists continue to study the mission and as European Space Agency uh, um, gets its spacecraft up there in just a few years. Um, just wanted to mention all of the different partnerships that we had. Uh, globally. Um, um, the main uh, mission was developed by the Applied, Applied Physics Laboratory um, in Maryland, in the United States. But we had um, a lot of contributions from many of our NASA centers that I had earlier, Goddard Space Flight Center, Johnson Space Flight Center, Langley Ray Space Center in, in, in Virginia, Glenn Space Flight Center in, in, um, in Ohio, and, and many more, Kennedy Johnson Space Center. So we had a lot of different, different um, um, NASA centers working on that. And we also had a lot of different universities all across the United States working that as well. University of Maryland, um, University of um, Mexico Tech, uh, many different universities all across the United States. And then I also mentioned the, the Italian Space Agency, which had a major contribution of uh, sending its small spacecraft up there. And obviously the cooperation with the European Space Agency that is still to, send, to launch their spacecraft, but we'll find a lot more information about uh, the asteroid when they are since their spacecraft carried up there in the future. So um, that was kind of my, my opening remarks. I'm looking forward to hearing more tonight. And uh, again, thanks for the opportunity.